the Gouda Vibes Burger. I didn't even know I liked Gouda until this. And that is just one of the delicious new fall recipes I've discovered thanks to HelloFresh. Find out why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, when you use code FACE14 at HelloFresh.com slash FACE14. So I'm just there, uh, cock in hand, calling the police because someone's looking at me. <laughs> well, no, I don't. Hello, call. and welcome hmm. to another episode of the <laughs> Face <Wait>. Podcast. <laughs> that, you want to start it there? Sure. Well, wait, wait Gavin. Say, I, I, editor, can you please start it with get Ga- the episode starts with Gavin saying. So I'm just standing there with cock in hand, calling the police, and that's the beginning of the episode. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, I guess without context, that's interesting. It's definitely an interesting sentence. So, Gavin, you were saying you had your cock in your hand, you were on the phone with the cops, you were in your yard. <laughs> Continue. Um, and then the little boy went to sleep, and that was the end of the fairy tale. Why'd you have to make it about kids? Well, yeah, well, that was I, know, I was really, trying to make it fictional, you, but it was really <laughs> went to kids. You pivoted out. it to the worst possible place. You made it way worse. <laughs> that, might have been, that might have been the worst pivot possible. Oh, it was uh, by far the worst. <laughs> I doubt. think we may, I think you may have pivoted us into a, into a new start of the episode. <laughs> Can I just, I'll, I'll pivot to just a description of how we're talking about if you're pissing in your yard. Yeah. And if somebody sees, is that indecent exposure? I don't think it is. You're in the privacy of your own backyard. Yeah, so I was I was saying that surely if my knob is out in view of other people's homes, that's still indecent exposure. And Andrew was saying that it would be, would be only weird if they kept looking. So I thought, well, maybe they're, <laughs> are they in the wrong? I just, I don't know the rules of that because you're in your own space. I think it's different. Let's say if you built like a seven foot wooden platform stood on top of it and then was just doing whatever you want to do up there. I think that's a different conversation. But if you're just on ground level in your yard, you're saying it's an altitude thing. I think so. Well, if you are, (laughs) if you are presenting yourself beyond the fence, I think if you've elevated above the fence would be my rule of thumb, (laughs) then it's an issue. Then you got a problem. But as long as you're touching the ground, I think you're all good. All right, here we go. Here we go. Anything to do with it. Here we go. I looked it up. So this is only this is only for the state of Texas. So it may be different okay. in England and in Canada uh, or the other 49 states in America. Uh, you may be charged with indecent exposure in Texas if you expose your naked body to the public while on your private property. OK, I was so, wrong. right. So the pub so public being potentially just a public place outside. But what if it's private property to private well, it property? says if you expose oh to the well. So you're saying you on your private property expose Backyard yourself to situation. someone on their private yeah, property. Yeah, basically like I can understand it if I'm in my front doorway. Yeah, front doorway <laughs> is a problem. I think the public in this instance probably refers to anyone who isn't uh, living on your property. Okay. This would be I, I would guess that would be like the legal definition. That's what I would have guessed. Yeah. Hmm. Oh my god, I closed that window and you know what was the previous window? What? Cosmic crisps. <laughs> <laughs> I reached out to them yesterday oh yeah yeah i hope we get a reply i reached out november 8th baby mm-hmm. very excited <laughs> i have another New apple drops <laughs> i have a question uh kind of about u.s law i was curious about that well it's kind of a strangely specific question i'm watching the halloween movies i think i've mentioned that before and i just watched halloween resurrection which is a movie all about michael myers is in his house and then they go to the michael myers home and then he kills a bunch of people is it does he do anything illegal technically in that movie in certain states? They're all trespassing. Yeah, because they're all trespassing. I was curious if technically <laughs> Michael Myers is completely legal in all of his action. I think it depends on what state he's in. That's they're in. Great. <laughs> I think Illinois, right? Illinois. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the standard ground laws are in Illinois, okay. but yeah. I was just watching. You think this is very odd. I think it, that might be because what comes after Halloween Resurrection? Uh, they reboot it with the Rob, Rob Zombie Halloween. Right. So that's probably why there was a reboot is he was innocent. <laughs> and uh, they were like, we can't, we can't prosecute this guy for defending his home territory. So as a property, so we'll have to reboot the series and we'll bring in a heavy hitter like Rob fucking Zombie. 
Well, when you bring in somebody like Buster Rhymes into your universe, you have to start over if you can't bring him back. That's the peak. <laughs> you need a palate cleanser. <laughs> oh, I don't know, but Buster Rhymes was the best part of that movie by far. He was pretty great. He was pretty great. Have you seen Halloween Resurrection, Gavin? No, I've never. I don't think I've ever seen anything apart from the first one. There's a scene where Buster Rhymes dresses up as Michael Myers, and Michael Myers starts following him <laughs> as Michael Myers, <laughs> and then he turns around and he thinks it's somebody else dressed as Michael Myers. He's like, "What are you doing here? I'm the Michael Myers of this show. What are you doing? Get out of here! Skidaddle, Michael Myers! Skidaddle! Get out of here!" <laughs> and Michael Myers just like turns around and walks away. It's great. Buster <laughs> Rhymes is the only good thing about that movie. He's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so did we start the episode? Yeah. Then, no, I feel like we're well in at this point. Gavin's the right, worst so thing right. you could possibly say. 73, I believe. <laughs> 73. I was talking to Andrew a little bit before we started, Gav, before you before you showed up early, which was shocking. Uh, yeah. it's, by the way, let this be known. <laughs> episode 73, I think, is the first episode you've ever shown up early for. Uh, I don't know if that's true. I don't think that's I true. I think it's the second. Second episode you've ever showed up early for. Not sure how I feel about it, to be honest with you. I feel like... Uh, the six minutes leading up to the episode is my safe space with Andrew to talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I was about five or six minutes early. I just wanted to uh, get get my tools ready. No, I, I hear you. We got a lot to talk about today. Uh, first off, Gavin got a little peak last night. Uh, got an update on the baseball throw. We need to deal with that. Oh, shit. Speaking. Uh, there's a timeline that we need to uh, lay mean? out. Um, what do you mean a timeline? I would just say, Andrew, don't don't get your hopes up. <laughs> I'm fucking. He's he's jeffing this, isn't he? No, no, Kevin, please, you have to support me here. <laughs> no, there's a. Uh, <laughs> what are you? What have you done? There are extenuating circumstances. Oh fuck you! <laughs> I would say he's he's jeffing it, but it's out of his hands. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, I would like to talk about how uh, you know the, the first off. I don't know if we covered it in an episode. I don't think we did, because I don't think it happened yet. But the baseball knobs sold out in an hour and nine minutes, which was phenomenal. The hell's a baseball knob? (laughs) Baseball bat knob. (laughs) Sorry. Oh. Because I'm getting ahead of myself. The baseball bat knobs, we sold a thousand of them in uh, in about an hour and nine minutes. So thank you so much for supporting such a dumb idea. Put a lot of love and effort into it. Uh, They ruined... Uh, the comfort of my home for a good couple, most of the summer, <laughs> as I had to move them around from room to room to get anywhere. And uh, I'm pretty sure it, it put a strain on the relationship that I didn't realize at the time between my girlfriend and I. But things have been better since the bat knobs are gone. I'll say that. Uh, anyway, so overwhelmed with the support uh, and we wanted to come up with what to do next. We talked about uh, a thousand baseballs. And I had, uh, I was actually talking about with Emily at lunch the other day, I think we landed on a great way to figure out how to sign and not sign some of the balls. So let me, let me, I've already talked about this with Gavin, but let me present it to you, Andrew. Okay, but before you do, can I just put a last, the last pile of dirt on the, on the knobs, the last comment about the knob and the bad situation? Yeah, I ordered one, haven't got mine yet. My confusion, I've said multiple times, I'm still kind of confused about part of it. So we just, there's a hundred... You sawed off a hundred knobs from full size bats, and the bat ends had the logo on it. And we sent out a hundred random bat ends, right? With the knobs, like a hundred random people got them. Is that correct? Okay. Continue your story. Well, I'm just I'm just confirming that was the thing. A hundred random people got full bats, right? Uh, I don't know if it was a hundred random or the first hundred to order. I'm not sure, but uh, I don't have anybody from the store here to ask. Okay, whatever. Hundred people got bats. I don't. Under, so when we started, we're like, why don't we sell full bats? Wait, wait. They got their own bat piece for their own knob? I don't yes. think so. I don't, I don't. Did they? I think so, yeah. I don't know. We'll, See, have, to, we'll have to. <laughs> we're still confused. We're confused on a whole other level. I just wait. don't under. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, what are you going to say? defeat the whole purpose about trying to find your bat end? I don't know if that was even a part of it. My confusion was that we were going to sell full bats. And we were, it was like, oh, we can't do that logistical nightmare. Not, not the, it's just complicated. But we sold full bats that were just in two pieces, and one piece is only like two <laughs> inches off the bottom. So oh, I don't you're understand. Saying, like, that's why we sold mini bats, is because yeah. full bats would have been Yeah, ridiculous. well, yeah, because uh, it turns out a, a full bat is uh, two inches too big. So we had to cut them to make them okay. fit the boxes. So, yeah, it was okay. <laughs> fair enough. I just I was confused. Yeah, no, uh, initially, when we looked into it, it looked like it was going to be difficult to sell a full bat. 
uh, and <laughs> ship it. But as we perfected and went through the process okay. painstakingly over months and months and months, they were able to work out a solution to ship. I'm happy they did. Size. Wait, so originally we didn't sell a full bat because we thought it was going to be too difficult. So we sold a tiny bat. Then we found out you could. I'll be honest. And then we still didn't. <laughs> I'll be honest. I don't remember why we did or didn't. I don't remember if I was why. wanting to sell a full. No, bag. we talked about it. It was I like, don't ah, they're like posters. Can't do it. I just remember wanting to, wanting to do something after manually burning in the numbers and all the bats. I wanted, I wanted to manipulate <laughs> the next product in some way and to continue that lineage, which is where I'm going. I love, I love that you love the bat knob, Andrew. I love that you bought one to show your support. I love that you, uh, you've registered your confusion. It is officially. Uh, on the books, it's a regulation registration, so that's that's there forever. It's there. It's mm -hmm. in. It's entered in. So we have that. Thank you. Uh, Thank but you. I would like to move on from the past, the highly successful thousand bat knob run past. To talk about a thousand baseballs. We talked okay. about taking a thousand baseballs, putting a face logo on them, and then we joked around about if I could hit it, like I could swing at a thousand baseballs, how many would I hit or not? Maybe the ones that I hit, we could sell. The ones that I don't hit, or we could sell as as uh, on a different tier and the ones that I swing and miss on, <laughs> if there nightmare. are any, if there are any that I miss, uh, those would be sold at a different rate, right? So then uh, uh, having a lunch, brainstorming, came up with this idea. Credit goes to Emily for helping me come up with it. Uh, what if I take the, I already have all this equipment, right? I saved four or five ba full-size baseball bats. Mm -hmm. they're, in my, they're in my spare bedroom. So I can take the full-size baseball bats. Then I can take the wood-burning kit that I have, and I can autograph my name deeply into the barrel over and over again, kind of all over, like maybe put like 20 autographs all over the bat barrel right where you connect with the ball then we get a big bucket of ink or paint okay and we stand it next to a ne next okay. to uh to home plate in a batter's mm -hmm. box and then we put all we load a thousand baseballs into the pitching machine then i dip the bat in into the ink or paint and then i swing in a ball and when i connect with the ball my the paint that has now gotten into the grooves of the baseball bat uh, of my signature connects with the ball and it stamps my signature on the ball and that's how we autograph a thousand baseballs. I love this idea. I think it's a fantastic idea. I think idea. it's the best idea ever. I think it's a great idea, but I, I think that it should be like a blind box situation where you they're all the same price, but you don't know whether you'll get a hit or not. Okay, I'm fine with that too. I'm fine with that too. I don't. I, I don't care how we portion it out. I just want to. I just want to do it. And I mean, I suspect <laughs> it'll be interesting because if I, out of a, out of a thousand swings, I I may hit 900 balls. So it may be rarer <laughs> not to get an autograph in this situation than to get one. We do it I was way. going the other way. I was immediately thinking with Gavin's idea. I think the concern is we might be greatly overestimating how many balls you could hit. There might only be like 85 balls with autographs on. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'm, I'm excited about getting jumping into that uh, and hitting the thousand balls and all that. But I want to get the ball throw out of the way first. So I want to you know talk about a timeline. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and and unfortunately, that's been pushed back just a teeny bit because of some <laughs> because of some issues. OK, <laughs> Should we get straight into your issues? Yeah. Okay. Well, he, let me preface by saying uh, I went to a party on Saturday. Oh, uh, no. A daytime yard party, right? Uh, Fred, it was lovely. I hadn't been in a backyard like garden party in, since before COVID. It was amazing. I had a lovely time. Uh, I got to speak to some interesting people, catch up with some old friends. Nothing, none of it related to the day job outside of work stuff. It was really great. Uh, however... Uh, in the process, I was talking to another friend of mine who was explaining that he, uh, for like two years, had had what he thought was like a, a pulled muscle on his groin, kind of like near his hip. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just would like never heal or it'd heal for a couple weeks and then he would repull it. And, then it, and eventually he just got so frustrated with it. He mentioned it to a doctor when he was like getting a physical and the doctor was like, oh, you probably have a groinal hernia. And he was like, yeah, most people think of hernias as like you get that like bulge when your intestines are poking out or whatever. But a groinal hernia, they don't poke out. It's just like a muscle tear. And so he uh, he had a CT scan and he found out he had one and he uh, he got it sewn up and now he's on the mend. Right. Mm -hmm. So as he was explaining that to me, I was realizing that what he's describing, I live with I've lived with for probably six years. Uh, I have a thing <laughs> that is I have a, pu a pulled muscle and like to the left, like kind of under my, I don't know, like where your leg creases kind of 
on my left leg that uh, is like a pulled muscle that never quite heals and comes and goes and feels wrong. Like it, it feels different than a pulled muscle mm-hmm. and it's fucking, it drives me nuts. Uh, and I always just think I'm a wimp, right? So that I was thinking <laughs> before I throw this fucking baseball, maybe I should go to the doctor and make sure I don't have a hernia because I don't want to, I don't want to cause any additional damage because okay. I'm about to go through some serious, tra- uh, serious training <laughs> regimen. I have tools. I have supply. I went to the fucking sports store. My trunk is full of shit uh, so that I can begin this process. So I just need to go to the doctor as of Saturday. I just needed to go to the doctor uh, just, just bounce this off him. He, he could say, no, idiot. It's, it's There's no way you have a hernia. Go home. You're fine. Throw your baseball. Or he could say, let's get a CT scan and see. Oh, you do have a hernia. You probably rip your leg off if you threw this baseball 80 miles an hour. Let's patch that up for a couple. You take a month off and then you're ready to go. Right. I, 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 I'm desperate to complete this challenge because I know I can do it. I just have to set myself up for success. OK, after that. That little bit of knowledge, which in my head I think, all right, this is pushing this is pushing the baseball down a little down the road a little bit, but not too much. Andrew will understand. Mm-hmm. Then I was feeling great, Andrew. I was feeling on top of the world. Uh, <laughs> Saturday night, I decided to play tennis. So uh, Emily oh, and no. Millie and I, we went out. We played we played tennis from like eight to ten on Saturday night, like with the lights on at the park. It was fucking cool. Uh, felt awesome. Sunday, got up, went on a twenty two mile bike ride. The weather was beautiful. <laughs> I could go at my own speed because I wasn't dragging Gavin or Trevor behind me. It was super easy. Uh, it was just, it was perfect. I came home. I'm telling you, I was on top of the world. I felt like I was 25 years old again, Andrew. I was full of sun. My body was lean and exercised. I was full of that, that post-workout energy. I looked at the backyard and I thought, I'm going to cut this fucking grass today. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be productive. I had fun this morning. I'm going to be productive this afternoon. And I walked into the house. I walked into the bedroom and I saw some laundry on the, on the sofa in the bedroom. And I said, uh, oh, before I cut the grass, why don't I put that folded laundry away and be doubly productive? <laughs> because I'm in such a good mood. I'm Wait, doing house chores. Just sorry. Quick pause. Is this related to the to the photo of laundry that we saw, or is this is this a separate? This is that's the photo. Fo- that's the photo. Yeah. Okay. Emily sent you guys a picture of laundry. What do you think happened, Andrew? Uh, <laughs> I don't know at this point. It's clearly Jeff got injured somehow trying to fold laundry. It sounds like. I will say it's very funny because you went on a list of like every sporting event a human could do. You're like, I did this. I did that. I did this. I kept waiting for the injury to happen. If you're going to tell me that it happened on a folding laundry incident. I didn't fold this laundry, Andrew. Okay. You're just I grabbing. I, I, I wasn't you're the one collecting. to fold it. Yeah, it was. Uh, I believe it was two pairs of pants, uh, girl pants. So they're smaller. It was my girlfriend's pants, not mine. And two, two or three of her T-shirts all folded up. And okay. I just bent over to pick it up. And the second I, I, I reached my destination, my hands reached that, uh, that, that little pile of laundry, I realized I would never be able to stand again. My back, <laughs> in that moment, broke in half. Oh, no. I've never felt a pain like that, I, like the muscle pull. <laughs> Emily was on the phone with her parents having like a Sunday, like Sunday call. And I went, ah! and I just, I just collapsed and I became instantly bedridden and I, I just got out of bed yesterday. Yesterday was my Wednesday was my first day out of bed. I, for the first day, I showed it to Gavin and Meg, I, uh, cause they came over for Survivor last night. I had to have a chair next to the bed so that I could stand up and then push the chair like like old people walkers, I like could push the chair just to the toilet so I could pee and back. And that process, mm-hmm. half an hour, half an hour to pee easily yep. and excruciatingly painful. I have sneezed more this week <laughs> than in my entire life. Each <laughs> each sneeze is like getting pun. It's like getting it's like Bane snapping Batman's back in half. That's what it feels like to sneeze. <laughs> it has been brutal. Brutal, I tell you. I admit, I'm sitting in a special chair. It's the only way I can sit up in my house. So I'm looking up at my computer like a little, like, like I'm a fucking toddler because it's so far above me. It, I, I cannot tell you the hell that I have been oh. in since Sunday afternoon. You do not need to explain the hell. You're forgetting you're talking to the man with the worst ankles possibly on the plane. <laughs> I understand the your pain. Yeah. I get Meg and it. I were over last night, and uh, we were we always trying to because Survivor is always the day before we record f- face. We always try and avoid anything that might be mentioned on f- face. <laughs> but yeah. we, I had that picture that he sent both of us, and um, he was moving real slow. 
he was sort of <laughs> hobbling around between rooms. And I was like, wait, are you injured? And he would just like, I, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I held off for as long as I could. He was at like the, the speed of a 90 year old. It was, but also trying to play it off like he wasn't that injured. <laughs> so bad. And then and then he pulled the photo up and he and Meg started trying to guess it. And so eventually it came out. But <laughs> yeah. Because I, I immediately saw the laundry and I thought, well, Jeff has shit all those clothes. So yeah. I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know an injury was even a factor. I could just no. see him moving around. I was like, uh-oh. What have it you was, done? Yeah, an absolute how did Jeff shit on this pile of clothing? What did he do to destroy it? <laughs> did he drop another like smoothie bomb and it went all over the clothes? Oh, like, yeah. what? Like, there was some stain. His, how did he shit his <laughs> jeans yeah. and his shirt and his socks? <laughs> oh my God, guys. I'm... I moved my toaster last week and I cleaned up more smoothie. Wow. <laughs> it, it was behind the toaster somehow. So I need to I need to just double check. I may have missed this. Did you not have a shoulder issue? Was that just what what was that? What shoulder issue? The whole the whole you opened this whole story about how you talked to a guy that had a thing wrong with his hip and it turned out to be an issue. Oh, a hernia. Yeah. Hernia, I don't know. I, yeah. I got, so I just, this is where I am in the timeline. I have to get back to where I can leave the house again, like mobile and move around and stuff. Uh -huh. And when I do that, like when I'm capable of leaving the house, I will then go to the doctor, get this hernia thing checked out. Once I get the A-OK -okay from the doctor, then I'm going to throw a fucking baseball. Jack just asked me today, he was like, would you be willing to do your first baseball throw on Extra Life as like a charity thing? So I was going to talk that over with you guys and see if you want to allow minor league fan Jack to co-opt our uh, silly uh, thing for the greater good or if we should tell him to go suck eggs. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I just wanted to give you a heads up. That's why I haven't thrown the ball yet. Is because I just have to get through these these minor setbacks so that I can throw the ball <laughs> healthy, so that then I can uh, have my three months to, if I need it, to get to eighty miles an hour. And then, then it's fucking. Then I'm teeing off on the baseballs. Boom! Okay. Signature. Boom! Signature. <laughs> Boom! Signature. <laughs> Should we have a wall behind you for all of the strikes with also some like different colored ink? <laughs> so like a says, canvas? Yeah, it just says like the loser stamped onto it. So the ball hits that. <laughs> <laughs> I have complete sympathy for your situation, Jeff. I hope your back gets better soon. I hope it's Thank not, you. not a long-term injury. I will say though, and I just want, want to throw this out there. I feel like you coin storied us again. I really feel like that you just did another version of the coin store at the sock, the sock thing. I think you just did that twice. Well, I feel like the buildup was necessary because he did all this other stuff in the day that wasn't, you know, that was way more intensive than laundry picking. We learned a thing about him that had nothing ultimately to do with the point of his story. <laughs> And it just, if anything, was like a fake tease. To, no, no, everything I told you, answer. everything I told you is germane to my ability to throw this ball. If I have a hernia, I got to get that fixed before I can throw the ball. But if the I don't hernias, have a hernia, then we're fine. But that, that's unrelated to what's currently happening. You can't, correct, you can't correct. go through. It's a, it's so a cascading series of events. Well, because it's something that we got to deal with between now and the ball. Because now that I know about the, po the possibility of a groinal hernia, I have to investigate it. It has to be dealt okay. with before I can throw the ball. So it, I, I don't want to throw, I, I, pardon the, 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 the reference, but I don't want to throw a curveball yeah. in the 11th hour when you're not expecting it and be like, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you because I don't want to pile on uh, because I didn't think it was necessary to the laundry story that I also have a hernia like three weeks from now or some shit. I want, I want to give you all the information I have as I have it. Okay, so this is, you're saying there are no other possible issues. This is it. This is, you wanted it all at one time. The hurdles are your back, and you might have a hernia. The other, the other potential issue, but I'm dealing with it, and I won't let it be a problem, <laughs> okay. is I have, uh, I have uh, seemed to have developed a pretty, pretty severe case of tennis elbow uh, from my tennis <laughs> lessons, but I bought a... I bought a <laughs> <laughs> my throwing arm, but I bought a compression sleeve, so uh, not even gonna worry about it. Jeff, I think okay. There's no way you're throwing eighty, regardless. I so. got this. I got this. We just got to get through these minor health hiccups, so make sure that I'm in fucking fit as a fiddle, and then I'm gonna start throwing the heat. You're gonna be the first person to end up in a full body cast from throwing. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs>
I don't think you should try. <laughs> I think I have to. I just, I just have to do it in a way that's not going to snap my back in half. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. Okay, God. so do, do we have no idea when your back will heal. Hopefully soon. Hope it's quick. Then uh, I fucking hope so, dude. Because I'm, I'm out of town next week to go ride roller coasters. So I hope I can. <laughs> I hope that's I can great. do that. Also, I can't record next week, but I assume everybody knew that. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that was my, my that was my small update on where the ball is. Uh, okay. In progress. Still in progress. Never stop being in progress. I assumed in progress. Going to be even longer with the injury. I still, I don't think, I don't think, I'm going to guess you throw 50 and I don't think you get above 65. And I assume that you're going to blame the ball. That's my ultimate guess <laughs> for all this stuff. You're going to go through I, all the fucking I, medical exams. You're going through, it's like you're going to space <laughs> the amount of training you're going through this. And then you're just going to be like the ball's off and then just deny We'll you be delaying for the weather a few times. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If you two are going to be at the same place for it, we're never going to get it done. <laughs> you guys got to do it independently. This motherfucker, he continues to be just an albatross <laughs> on, around the neck of a good time. Let me tell you, fucking last night, we're watching Survivor. Everything's fine. Everything's going A-okay. We're like, I don't know, four-fifths of the way through the show, and Gavin goes, eh, no power went out. Uh, Hulu seems to be working. Uh, nothing got in the way of us watching the episode. And Meg looked at him and goes, you fucking asshole. You just jinxed us. And he's like, ah, that's not blah, 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 blah. British. That's not real. Or whatever dumb shit he said. Not two minutes later in Tribal Council. Fucking <laughs> in boom. In, no. in the middle of Tribal Council, fucking Halo Hulu goes out. Comes back, goes down again. <laughs> uh, everyone was extremely mad at me. And I feel like I was only... 40% to blame. God damn, dude. Why did you say that? Mm. <sighs> I can't. I'm just, I'm still sad. I'm still disappointed about the, the outcome. I don't know if spoilers or not or whatever. I'm not going to say the person, but I, I feel like it was a devastating loss to the season. I think he's my, <laughs> the person who was the best out. player. I, I truly believe it. I was so excited every week to hear a different take on Broccoli and how he fumbles it. But <laughs> he fucking... flipped his he didn't so know what he was saying. No, he, uh, he, was, he was my pick to win. I love how he's self-aware about that, too. He's like, yeah, it was great. He's uh, like, I really, fucking I really butchered sucked that. at that. Yeah, that was <laughs> I didn't terrible. like how I said it. <laughs> <laughs> I assumed that he would like go over to the guy and be all private about it. I didn't expect him to just fucking declare on the mat. I don't think that's a rule. I don't think they have to do it in that context. Because then he walked I over and was what? like, I'm sure you flub that. Like, I don't think you need to. I think they do have to say it in front of everyone. You d well, I don't. Okay. Uh, it's it's such my a favorite thing is <laughs> Jeff's always like, all right. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Even though he knows exactly what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Jeff Bros is great at playing that shit straight. He's like, if you say so, moving on. Anyway, that's the Survivor update of the week. <laughs> yeah, I will say, it, the one thing that was great about watching it last night was, you know, we all picked our characters, and, you know, Gavin picked Brad, and I picked Tiffany. And last night was just an, it was just watch. It, we both could tell one of us was going home, and it was just <laughs> watching two people just fucking, just fall, fall through Survivor. My pick had a big sway in the decision. We were all involved in some way. You two felt like one of you were going home. Yeah. My pick was like, I got to make this choice. Yeah, Disappointed. True. Disappointed in my pick. Just hum and do some evil shit. That's what you do. <laughs> vote the other one. Uh, oh, uh, if you want for the baseball portion of this non-baseball podcast, I will uh -huh. say uh, Yankees Red Sox wild card game the other night. There was so much Don Zimmer coverage. It was awesome. He really? showed up in a <laughs> yeah. bunch of different vignettes. They showed the Pedro fight. They had all kinds of Zimmer coverage. If you're a Zimmer, if you're a fan of the Zim, it was a good. Uh, it was a good time to tune in. I'm so glad you mentioned that because I was watching that and they had a cut. They were doing like history of the series between the teams, and they just showed an image of Don Zimmer face in the grass when he fell. I was like, that's the least flattering <laughs> image of all the images for that. You choose that to be the representation of just him face first on impact and Pedro Martinez. Uh, who threw him, uh, you know, the Pedro and the Don yeah. Pedro project that I'm working on. He uh, he is one of the color commentators for like the uh, T or TBS, like before the game coverage with Ernie from uh, inside the NBA on TNT. Then he's very funny and very uh, colorful. I'll say he's a funny dude. 
This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. The best way to think about therapy is through a bunch of analogies. We get oil changes for our cars to prevent bigger issues down the road. We see the doctor and we go to the gym to take care of our bodies to present injury and disease. We do chores reg well, some of us do chores regularly to avoid messy houses. Going to therapy is like all of the above. It is routine maintenance for your mental and emotional wellness to prevent bigger issues down the road. Going to therapy doesn't mean that something's wrong with you. It means you're investing in yourself to keep your mind healthy. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It is much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Why invest in everything else and not your mind? This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Face listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash face. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-L-E-P dot com slash face. Tushy, the modern bidet company, washes away even the messiest of poops, leaving you with a better clean than toilet paper. Discuss your worst poop experiences and how Tushy could have helped. I routinely discuss my poop experiences, uh, good and bad, on this very podcast uh, in de gross detail. Uh, and I, uh, I mention uh, uh, quite often about the efficacy of cleaning your butthole with water. Think of it this way. Is your butt right now clean enough to sit on your couch naked? If no, get a Tushy, the modern bidet that attaches directly to your toilet in under 10 minutes. Tushy is the modern bidet for people who poop modernly. Think of it this way. You don't want to be some old pooper living in the past, uh, adhering to some old aristocracy, when the modern people are taking modern dumps in a modern bidet. It's easy to install. It attaches to the toilet in under 10 minutes. It doesn't require electricity or plumbing. And it reduces your toilet paper use by 80%, saving you money and earth trees. So start washing with a tushy bidet for a better clean. Go to hellotushy.com slash face to get 10% off plus free shipping. This is a special offer for our listeners at hellotushy.com slash face for 10% off. After you buy and install your tushy, show it off. Tag us and at Hello Tushy on Instagram. Should we talk about garlic? <laughs> We're oh like yeah, as a matter of fact, should we just my fucking fr my front door just um. Let me go see if my garlic thing shut up. I'll be right back. What do you mean your garlic? We should also cover the um <laughs> the I'm not a blank guy list. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think we need to touch on garlic and then and then we can do that. Yeah, you want to do it that way around? I think so because I've had my foot in garlic for an hour now. <laughs> so. <laughs> I feel like we need to mention it. It was supposed to... I, you always just do stuff. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. Let me hear. The science said you had to do it an hour before, that it didn't kick in oh. until an hour into it. So, so you're the only one partaking in this experiment. So I put it in. mine has not been... <laughs> Why did you tell me when I was six minutes early? Get what the you, foot in now. <laughs> well, I didn't know what getting ready meant. I didn't know anyone else was doing garlic. I'm, I'm getting garlic. I'm making cheese and pickle sandwiches. Dude, I'm getting all the shit what ready. What do you mean? What? What are you talking about? We're halfway through. Right. You're too late anyway. Are we, regardless. Are we garlicking? Well, did you hear that, Jeff? I've been garlicking. No, what's up? Apparently, dipshit, <laughs> the experiment only works if you've had your foot in garlic for an hour. So I was saying, why didn't he tell me that when I was six minutes early? I could have dunked the foot I've been in. sitting here next to a tray of garlic. I could have put my foot in it at any point in time. Okay. I think the second thing is you need to contain it as well. Like, it's, it's you need to wrap it. It's not just that your foot is in garlic. Where I think was it's all a this information? No, 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 no. I don't have to contain it. I, dude, I, I saw your garlic. I have, like, minced liquid garlic that's gonna be that's gonna fucking that's it's gonna seep into my pores hold on which foot <laughs> let me i'll show you i'll post i got i've been wearing a garlic shoe for this entire podcast so far. oh this sucks I'm, I'm going out for a meal tonight i'm gonna be just tasting garlic based on the <laughs> freaking stuff that was on my foot an hour ago this is this is my foot i just <laughs> got garlic <laughs> shoe <laughs> So here, Andrew's <laughs> foot is wrapped in. That is the most disgusting <laughs> picture I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, I can, I can one up you, buddy. Hold on a second. Oh, that's just so gonna gross. be full of sweat. There's no way that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> he sweat logged his foot, and there's garlic in the back. You're supposed to contain it, and it takes an hour. So I thought we'd bring it up at the beginning, and I'd say when the garlic kicked in. 
We're 30 minutes in. I'm starting to get I some hints I just got garlic, garlic and a knife, and I was just going to spread some on. Well, your foot? I got a foot full of garlic, and I ordered a steak, so I can see if I can flavor the steak in my mouth with the garlic. Yeah, I wait. made a cheese and Branston sandwich, and I was going to knife some garlic onto the bottom of my foot and see if I could taste <laughs> wait, it in the sandwich. Wait! You thought that you'd immediately taste garlic after you just spread it on your... I don't your know ulcer. the rules! You what, are you, that, uh, what are you spreading? What type of spread? You got an aioli? What are you doing? What do you it's mean? Cho- it's a little... Jo- it's a... Oh, let me oh you a Jesus Look, I got Christ! A- <laughs> oh my god! I got my foot and garlic, and I got my steak right here. <laughs> oh, it, looks like- <laughs> it looks like you're imprinting your foot. Oh. What is the what is the thing? What is the dressing in that? That olive oil? What is no, that? No, it's just it's just minced garlic. Oh. It's, just, it's pure it's pure garlic, dude. What's, what's, are you just gonna post a fucking photo of a butter knife, Gavin? What are you gonna do? What was your setup? It makes no sense. I was just <laughs> Hold on. Let me post the picture. I was just gonna knife some of that <laughs> one. Does <laughs> that not count? Here's my steak. <laughs> you also, also it was supposed to just be an unseasoned steak. There's no way that's not seasoned. What are you doing? I ordered an uh, I ordered an unseasoned steak, and the steakhouse canceled my order two minutes before the podcast started. So I had to quick oh, order something late. from Outback Steakhouse. What is that? You're telling me that steak isn't seasoned? Look oh. at that steak. Oh. All right, it's going on the foot. Pepper all over the place. What are you doing? <laughs> it's not seasoned in garlic. It's seasoned in pepper. Oh, there's some oil in this. <laughs> oh, I got broccoli. Where, where on the foot is, is the prime area? I, it's like, the heel, I believe. But oh it's my not... god, I put it everywhere except my heel. Oh, <laughs> what shit. are you doing? <laughs> the heel, you know. What do you mean? You're not giving me any information. You're you just, st- your instructions are, have it on your heel an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, you're fucking salad. You're, you're making a salad out of this, dude. What do you mean? Right. I'm, make- I'm the only one who did it right. I didn't know the road. Because you, gonna cause do you it. fucking safeguarded the information and didn't let us have it. Well, I didn't know you're going to use it. First of all, from the things I've said, this is just incorrect. If anything, you should be happy, <laughs> Jeff. You're eating a fucking steak. That looks delicious. You've won. Yeah, it's good, but I can't taste the garlic. <laughs> it looks like I've stepped in cat vomit. What are you doing, Gavin? What? Why would you do that? Let's see your foot. <laughs> no, I don't want to see it. No, it's too gross. No, at least, <laughs> I don't want to make full content. No. I'm out. No. It's on there. It's on there. Trust me. Oh Jesus Christ! How much did you put on? Should we not release these photos? <laughs> They're too gross. No, you can really. If you want to make foot stuff, then go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Just really narrowing in the specific category of <laughs> foot on garlic. Finally. I just love that it says fart hard in that picture. <laughs> it's a great photo. Have you rolled your ankle? It looks swollen. It's just the angle. Oh, okay. It always look weird if I take him at the wrong angle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so far, <coughs> I can smell a lot oh. of garlic. Well, you just opened it. Of course, he, like, I don't know. I can't taste this garlic yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take a bite of this sandwich. an hour. I think it takes an hour to kick in. Mm. Tasting garlic with feet. Tastes like cheese and pickle. So I'll just leave my foot in the thing. Mm. Well, Andrew, you've had uh, you've had your foot in garlic for a full hour. How does it how does it taste? I'm not getting a lot of taste yet. I'm getting some some through the nose. Like I feel like I can smell it like deep <laughs> deep in the nose, but it's not it's not in the mouth yet. Do you think maybe that's all it is? I mean, we'll find out. <laughs> We're gonna. I'm. I'm in a position. If I'm gonna taste it, I'm gonna taste. Like we will find out definitively. I got some bread. I was gonna have garlic toast or garlic bread. There's no garlic on the bread. Just foot garlic. I will say the um <clears throat> the cheese and Branston sandwich with gentle wafts of garlic. It's pretty nice. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm tasting it. Uh, what's your food that you're eating? I'm eating bread. I was gonna do Just garlic bread. bread. Yeah, okay. garlic bread was the idea. Are you a garlic bread guy? I'm a huge garlic bread guy. Love garlic bread. Get some cheese on there, melt it. Fantastic. It's a great food. It, I think it might be the best bread. I'd go as far as saying garlic bread is the best bread. Uh, oh, I don't know. I'd have to think about that for a while, but it is very, very good. I'm, I'm, I'm recently a two things guy. I know we're going to do a whole segment about your things, but I just discovered I am a, I was talking about this with Gavin last night. I want to get into this in a big way with face. I'm a koozie guy now. 
I'm, I'm falling hard for koozies. <laughs> and oh my God, are you guys aware of pastrami? I was like it's an idea. Phenomenal. Yes. I am okay. a fucking <laughs> pastrami guy through and through. I have discovered over the course of the last like three weeks. I cannot get enough pastrami in me. It is so good. Okay. I'd never eaten pastrami before. How do you never have... Pastrami? Yeah, it's not a big thing in the, like in the South in America. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's my bad. I should have said the hour. I'll, I'll, that's on me. Oh, that's it's my like slipping off. <laughs> I, I, oh, no. Dude, I've got to have my so foot gross. like face up. What are you doing? You don't have a thing to put your foot into? Well, I don't have a tray. I was just going to spread it on, what hoping it'd be like butter. What are you doing? It, it's more the consistency of cat sick. So it's sort of, if I don't keep my foot upright, it's just going to slough off onto the carpet. I just, the decisions. It's my fault about the hour. I don't know what you're <laughs> doing with your game plan. The fact you don't have a tray, <laughs> that's a clear cookie sheet situation. I'm, I got a, my foot's nestled safely in a cookie sheet. It's fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> So it says oh, strong. <laughs> it says the try it for yourself. Cut a piece of fresh garlic in half. Then in a separate room that doesn't smell like garlic, take <laughs> off your shoes and socks and place your feet into a plastic bag with the piece of garlic. After an hour, <laughs> you'll be able to both taste and smell the garlic. Neither of you are doing any of it right. You've missed on every level. It's no. not contained. <laughs> it's not fresh garlic. <laughs> you don't have a time. You do not have the time to taste the garlic, but I feel like you have to stick with what you're doing until you get that hour to find out if there is any effect. In a separate room that doesn't smell like garlic. How is that important? Does it mean you should stay in that room? <laughs> well, no, no, it's just, you know, garlic gives a lot of odor, so you don't want to be, you like want to establish this isn't from cutting up the garlic in this space. You're right. smelling that you're, you're in a garlic freeze out outside of what's on your foot. <laughs> Oh, can I give you guys a little bit of good... Oh, these are good veggies. Can I give you guys a little bit of good, uh, good f face news? Yes. Yes. Yeah. The most recent episode of f face to be in the report. I don't know if it's this Wednesday's episode. No, it'd be last week's episode. So that was 70 or 71. I think it was the... Probably the Spicy Icy episode. That last week's episode was 70, which was the mid-episode retraction and retrain an anus. Okay, that one. That is the uh, on track to be the highest uh, viewed episode or listened to episode of all time. Wow, that's awesome! Yeah, yeah, it's uh, doing really well. Thank you so. to everybody who's listening and sharing it for real. Thank Why you not? so that's much great. to everybody who's yeah. listening, and some of you appear to be listening twice or even three times. Like you, two or three times more. And if you told somebody <laughs> about it, super appreciate that too. It's nice to know that people are listening. I really, pre yeah, I really appreciate the people who are actually telling. <laughs> Because it's a gamble. <laughs> it's a gamble saying, hey, listen to this podcast. <laughs> Give up your time for this shit. I, I feel like that's a special bond. If you, if you know someone you would share this podcast with, <laughs> I think that's great for your friendship. <laughs> listen, you need to hear me out, but they put a bunch of garlic on their feet. <laughs> <laughs> but they did it wrong, and that's why it's funny. <laughs> they did it wrong. <laughs> God damn, dude. The <sighs> thing, I don't even know if I did it right, to be completely honest. We're gonna, if we're just gonna be sharing things here. I don't know if I did it right. I don't think I cut into every piece. I've got five pieces of garlic in the bag. I cut two and a half of, I guess three of them. I think I that's a enough. three cut. I think it's enough. I think if I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it at that point. All I know is that I don't want to be anywhere near that when you open the bag. <laughs> it's gonna be. <laughs> that's the problem. It's be rancid. Here's the thing. I don't. I'm scared to do it. I don't know when I'm gonna take this bag off. It might just be here for a while. Just shove that bag. Off. Just take your foot with that bag and shove it in the fire extinguisher bag. I and just <laughs> nest, make it like a matryoshka doll of uh, dumb shit you've done on this podcast. Yeah, so, take it out of that bag, dunk it straight in the fire extinguisher dust, and it will uh, dampen the smell. Realistically, I don't know why I'd have to take the bag off. Like, what would be the thing that forces me to do it? I think I could live my life with this foot bag for a while if I want. You're wanted. a fool. It would. I don't want away. to. I don't want to. I'm just saying. I think I could. You could, and here I'm gonna I'm gonna go through something. This reminds me of a, of a piece of golden, amazing, brilliant early internet. Uh -huh. uh, do you guys remember the the Spark dot com? No. Uh. I think it's like a it's like a it's like a Cliff Notes kind of thing, and then I th I think it eventually turned into a dating site. Um, but before that, they did like it was like a internet. Well, they called them e insights, everything, nothing site, but it was like a blog, like entertainment okay. site back in the day. 
and there was a guy on there named Christian who would do all these experiments. He had did this one called the Date My Sister Project. He did a bunch of different stuff, but he did one called there was one called the Stinky Meat Project, where somebody took a whole bunch of uh, like barbecue and they th- put it on a plate and then they hid it in their neighbor's backyard and then they just would sneak over once a day and document it as it was deteriorating and seeing how long it would take his neighbors to notice the smell. So he did one that was like a response to that called the Stinky Feet Project, where he went, I think he's from Boston, he went into a public, like a YMCA shower, barefoot with one foot, and he walked around the shower uh, and bathroom barefoot, and then he stuck his foot in a plastic bag for 30 days and didn't take it out. Oh. It was called the Stinky Feet Project oh, Jesus to see Christ. like what would happen to him, and he documented it hilariously the whole way. And uh, he ended up with like you know all manner of issues with his foot. But, oh uh, Jesus Christ! Was any of it permanent? I don't know. I don't know. That was so. This was like pre Rooster Teeth. This was early two thousands, uh, <laughs> probably two thousand one, two thousand two. But uh, if, you, if you could probably find it online, it was a very funny. You know, it was, it was back then. It was all like pictures and 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 yeah. words. It was pre video, so. Very funny. I feel like as long as I hop on one leg, I could commit crimes right now, and I'd be good. I wouldn't get caught. <laughs> Except also, you would leave a trail of garlic smell all the way back to the bedroom. A, I'm, like a vil- I'm like a Batman villain. The this garlic bandit, yeah. Yep. <laughs> I think I smell garlic right now. <laughs> I think it's coming. I think it's kicking in. I can really... I'm, I got some garlic in the air. That's probably because there's garlic. Have you achieved a full hour? Yeah, no, I I put this on seventy four minutes ago, so I'm get I feel like I'm getting I feel like it's kicking in. I feel like I'm getting some strong strong garden garden gar, blah, garlic. I can't even say it. Strong garlic odors right now. Yeah, but that's I because there's it. actually garlic in your foot. No, but it's in my nose right. Like it's it's deep. Yeah, l- listen, you wouldn't understand. You didn't do this experiment <laughs> right. But it is. It's in my core. Have you wrapped the bag enough to the point where you know no garlic is leaking out? I taped the fuck out of the top of that bag. I did like oh, yeah, 12 like loops with tape. To your, it's taped I to your leg taped it. Oh, it's going to be a problem when I take off this bag. That's not going to be fun. Do you know, I, I think I know uh, the next face uniform uh, project we could make. Garlic bags? Oh, garlic no. patches. Garlic patches for your feet. Yeah. Almost like, no. I, like those like icy hot patches no. you put on your back, but they, they'd imbue the power of garlic into your foot so that you could be like, Hey, my you know my girlfriend doesn't like when I eat garlic because it gives me a stinky <laughs> mouth. But I like to eat garlic with my dinner. So like an hour before you go to your restaurant, slap on a garlic patch on the heel of your foot, put your sock and your shoe on like normal. <laughs> eat, go eat your steak and your mashed potatoes, and you'll be tasting garlic all goddamn day long. But when you get a kisser at the end of the night, you won't have garlic breath. <laughs> Would it be like a massive Boom! nicotine patch, like with like a big band aid with a garlic like lump yeah. in the middle? Mm-hmm. It could be. Yeah, we'll call it flavor foot. It's gonna <laughs> revolutionize the world. Could it just be socks, Jeff? Could we sell? Could it? Would it be a garlic sock product? Maybe. Uh, like not it more looks, socks. <laughs> it looks like a normal sock, but you slip it over. Two left garlic socks. I was asking. Uh, I had a merch meeting yesterday, and I was I was asking the merch guys if we could sell like uh, f- face branded like Tiger Balm and Icy Hot for <laughs> all of my injuries. <laughs> what? They said no. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> also, all of your relation to Tiger Bomb on this show has been shoving it in your asshole. I don't feel like that's a thing you then want to sell. Like as a <laughs> well, I wanted to get like the patch for my back because okay. I've been going through them. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> your fucking back. <laughs> You're gonna ride roller coasters next week. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm definitely gonna see them. I don't know if I'll ride them. You just made my week, Jeff. All of next week, I'll be thinking about you and your shitty back walking around in a music <laughs> I'm not going to be. I don't you're, know how much walking I'll be doing either. You're going to experience I, zero amusement at this amusement park. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to make me very happy. Jack made a joke today that he would just push me around in a wheelchair so I, don't, I can't get out of it. And that actually seems like a solution to me. So I'm, <laughs> I'm open to that if I have to. Just like the idea of some fan seeing that and taking a picture. Just be like, well, look at where Achievement Hunters ended up. <laughs> oh, this gar- I'm getting a lot of garlic. I'm tasting it. I'm ta- it's working. The science is working. You're tasting it just in your mouth? I'm tasting it in my mouth right now. This is fucking crazy. I didn't expect this to work. 
Are you are you still garlicking, Gavin? <laughs> no, I, I, I was. My leg was going numb, and I wasn't yeah. like an hour in, so I just scraped the garlic off. Well, for, and for my the sandwich record, is gone. I had a feeling you were gonna bitch out, but for the record, I am still garlicking. So I'm, I got to be going on thirty minutes at this point. I should I should be getting. I mean, you're missing key steps, but I'm. T- I can. T- I need to try. I need to have some bread. Give me a minute. Let me get this bread. Let me open this up. See if this is some garlic <laughs> bread. Well, it should be toast, really, shouldn't it? For the full effect. Well, is it? No, there's not. You can have garlic bread without it being toasted. What do you think's more iconic, garlic bread or garlic mashed potatoes? Bread. Oh, garlic bread. Yeah, I guess so. By a lot. Garlic mashed potatoes are great. That that reminds me. We need to. I feel like we need to get into this list because there's some things. Yeah, let's get into the list. There's some things that we need to address with this. So an amazing comment lever has compiled a list of all of the I'm not or I am a blank guy moments from Andrew. Mm-hmm. And it is uh, an insane thing to read in a row. <laughs> Shall I just read down the list and then we can get into the like, do you remember what they are? Uh, do you want to do that or do you want to go one by one and we'll then we one like one. address? Yeah, let's go <laughs> one by one and I can address them. As they appear. Okay, it's definitely... What I'm immediately noticing is that it's, de- it's definitely ramped up as f- face has gone on. <laughs> Towards the beginning, there's like a seven episode gap where you never said it. There's a nine episode gap after that. All right. <laughs> episode one, it just says, unsure if he's a Dan Bilzerian guy. Definitely not a Dan Bilzerian guy. That, is, that has episode been an update. Episode eight. Okay. Not a pickle guy. Still true. Not a good medical person. I don't yeah. know what that... I'm going to assume it's like... I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is, but I think it's probably true. I'd say that's okay. still true. Do you want to move on from that one? Is that the best you can uh, do? Well, I, I'm going to guess that that's probably related to like going to get checked out when my ankle's fucked up or something ah. like that. Like I'm going to assume yeah. it's that. Episode 19. Not an egg guy. Still not an egg guy. Still haven't tried it. <laughs> classic, I feel like, classic, yeah. classic, classic, classic moment. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. N- not a big chocolate fan. See that is I wanna I wanna clarify that that's an important clarification. I it's not that I dislike cho- I I would say I'm not a chocolate guy. I think that's true. I prefer <laughs> like salt. But you okay, Jeff? You getting some garlic? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you may have moved his foot, and the wind is no, taking the no. <laughs> I haven't moved my foot at all. But I'm telling you, I'm sitting in garlic juice. I think it's a garlic juice. <laughs> Dude, my nose all at once just started tickling in the back and like burning like I had wasabi or something. And I definitely can smell garlic in a way I couldn't before. A deep, a deep garlic smell. Oh, it's uncomfortable. Sorry, sorry, continue. I think my favorite thing about this list is that for episode one, you were unsure if you were a Dan Bilzeri guy. It wasn't like I, it was, I didn't know. I don't think he knew who he was. I, I didn't really know. Who he was, yeah. I've okay. learned since. Not a not a Dan Blazerian guy at all. Episode 21, not a frozen fruit guy. This is, I need to talk about this. This has been a big <laughs> recent change in my life. I am now, put it on record, I'm now a big frozen fruit guy. Whoa! Big Great. frozen fruit so guy. Episode 21, not a frozen fruit guy. Episode 73, a frozen fruit guy. Yep. No, it's on the on the books. I would almost go as far as saying I recently have gotten into some frozen raspberries, like store bought frozen in a bag raspberries. Game changer. Might be my favorite way to eat raspberries at this point. Throw them <laughs> in some water, use them as ice cube. Just eat them out of the bag. They're delicious. You better like blend them up on you in a smoothie. Well, I'm sure you could do that too. I haven't gone that far yet. I've just I've, I've, I've used <laughs> them as like it on ice cubes of raspberries. <laughs> yeah, they're great. Try it. It's fucking delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Highly recommend. Are you an ice eater? Because a lot of people just ch- like chew and no, crunch up ice cubes. But that's, and I can't. I hate that's it. That's another thing. I I was also I hated ice. I've become an ice guy. I'm not gonna <laughs> chew on them. I'm not a big chewing ice guy. But I'm putting them in some drinks recently. Outcast was right. Cooler. There is something cooler than cool, and it's ice cold, and it's fucking great. Put some ice in that drink. <laughs> You're gonna have a great time. I used to just think, oh, it's in the fridge. It's cool. I'm good enough. No, you get some ice cubes in there. It is delicious. Big <laughs> ice guy. Now. The list faster than I can read it. All right. <laughs> not a big syrup guy. That's true. <laughs> in the same episode, not a pants guy. I don't even own a pair of pants. So yeah, still <laughs> remains true. Do not own. Not, not. I hate pants. Not a caffeine person. 
Yeah, it's not a judgment. I just don't drink coffee. I, I'm not a big energy drink consumer. I just don't have a lot of caffeine, but nothing against it. Are you still are you still using your Keurig to make uh, other shit? I uh, I haven't used it in a while uh, to make anything but hot chocolate. I'm still in some hot chocolate rotation with it, but I haven't used it mm. for ramen recently. Gotcha. No cooking recipes. Episode twenty nine. <laughs> would love to be a hat guy. <laughs> I would absolutely love to be a hat guy. It's just it's, my head's too big. <laughs> Can't do it. <laughs> in the same episode, not a big party guy. Okay, that's that, absolutely true. That might have true. been the one where you f- sat in the chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably um, it was within the context of that, I'd assume. Episode 30. Not a mayo guy, not a soup guy, not a heating guy. <laughs> <laughs> what is a not a heating guy? <laughs> so we need to, we need to tack- tackle these one at a time. I am still not a mayo guy, but holy <laughs> shit, am I an aioli guy. I fucking <laughs> love an aioli. You give me a roasted garlic aioli. I know it's just mayo, but if you have a different word, you fancy it up and call it an aioli, I'm all on board. Give me endless aioli, but I hate mayo. So you like flavored mayo is what you're saying. I'm a fan of flavored mayo, and I'm okay with mayo as long as I know it's not there. It needs to gotcha. be a sneaky mayo. So do you okay. think uh, one step up from the condiment challenge would be the aioli challenge? I d- oh. I don't want us to touch condiments ever in the future. <laughs> I'm <really> scared. <laughs> It'll be the end of this podcast. <laughs> you also can't do better than a garlic aioli, so there's no point. There's no evolution on it. Last night at Survivor, Meg brought up the the condiment thing, and I was just like, "No, nope. touchy subject. Don't do it." <laughs> Still not a soup guy. Absolutely hate heating. Not a fan of it in any way. Not a fan. Don't what does like that heat. mean, heating? Like radiators or like central yeah, air? Yeah, yeah, like like if uh, if I want my place to be as cool as it possibly can be, I don't like it when it's hot outside. I'm, I much prefer cold over hot. But what if you're too cold? I'm never too cold. Okay. Never <laughs> doesn't happen. It's never an issue. Okay. Still not a soup guy. Interesting. Because there yep. are some good soups out there. There's some great soups. I could see myself eventually becoming a soup guy, but I just haven't, I haven't experienced it. What's your favorite soup, Gavin? Yeah, I feel like mine was an acquired taste. My favorite soup is probably my least favorite soup when I was growing up. Tomato and basil. Mmm, that's a good soup. You, I do you feel like you bread. have to be a grown up to, un, to really enjoy it. Yeah, I remember as a kid just being like, ugh. Same. I didn't like the smell Same. of it. <laughs> uh, episode 32. Oh, this one, I like the way he's, he's made sure not to just blindly put them in. He's clarified, asked if he's not much of a bat guy by Jeff. I feel like that one doesn't really count. Yeah, I was going to say, I would say at that time, not a bat guy. At this point, I own like four <laughs> bats. So I, I think I'm definitively a bat guy at this point. I have to be. Episode 33, the return of not a pants guy. The second mentioning. I Dang. needed to be known. That's how much I dislike pants. It needs multiple <laughs> sayings. I am not. Do not accuse me of being a pants guy. It's not true. Uh, there was then a seven episode gap when you stated, I'm not a socks guy. Still true. <laughs> not a socks guy. Still don't true. like him. It's like a prison on your feet. I don't like him. I, I like my feet to breathe. <laughs> Coming from the guy with a bag of garlic strapped. This is foot. my commitment to the show. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a thing I do. Uh, uh, episode 41. Uh, not the sound guy. I don't know what that uh, means. Maybe we were dealing with... Oh, that was in the intro, so we're probably dealing with your tech problems, I assume. And <laughs> oh, you also that said, makes sense. You also said, not a social media guy, coming from the guy who's been on social media for over a decade, I think. Mm. I don't know what that... What does that mean? What do you mean? You said you're not a social media guy. Yeah, but what does the... the for a decade thing, what does that mean? Are you saying well, that you I get am? Twitter? Well, it doesn't matter when I got it. I barely use it. Um, mm-hmm. I like I, I look at tweets. I'm not posting a lot. Almost everything I post is related to the show. I think I've had a Twitter account for 13 years, and I've less than I'd say 700 tweets. It's pretty low. Though. I'd say you're a social media guy. No, nah, I, I I bet you I bet you I bet you 300 of those are show related. Oh, uh, okay. Well, possibly. Episode 44. <laughs> a mere four episodes after not a socks guy. Andrew declares he is not a socks guy. <laughs> Once again, <laughs> twice in yeah. the same episode. Even that yep. happened. <laughs> Andrew feels so. Andrew feels so strongly about cl- restrictive clothing. I'm not a fan so of. There's three mentions of not a socks. Uh, yeah. Once in forty and twice in forty-four. Episode forty-five. <laughs> don't understand this one at all. Not a fine ideas guy. <laughs> this is what I think it is. I've thought about this, and I, and I agree with this statement. <laughs> what does that mean? So I'm a big fan of either terrible ideas or great ideas. 
I don't like a decent idea. A middle idea isn't that exciting. <laughs> it's fine. That plan is a fine plan. I either want it to be a horrible plan or a great plan. I'm not a big fine ideas guy. Fine? You think that's all that means? Is that right? I, I think so. I haven't checked, but I'm assuming that's the context of <laughs> Episode 46, not a hand towel guy. I never use them. Don't need them. <laughs> Unneeded. Are you, are you more of a, like a, a, a Dyson Airblade or an accelerator guy, like a, a blower guy? Or are you talking like in the bathroom at home, you just sort of shake your hands dry? Oh, uh, you're shaking the hands. And yeah, if, I'm, if we're talking a food situation, I'm not even a napkin guy. Don't need it. I'm careful with what I do. I'm precise. I don't need any napkins. <laughs> not a napkin guy. I'm not He's a napkin precise. Guy. I'm careful with what I do. I am. I make sure the sauce to food ratio is fine. It's not going to spill. If it does, then I just have to live with it. That's life. You have consequences so, for your actions. When you stepped in a sushi <laughs> container, yeah. I assumed there was some residue in it. What did you? How did you get that off? No, I don't think there was. I think it was just like a top. It was the top. It was the cover part. I don't think there was anything there. And if mm. I did, I would have stepped in it. I, I'm probably just having a shower at that point. If it's <laughs> See, we're washing See, it away. You would say a paper towel is, is the tool of the imprecise then. Uh, according to you. Well, a paper towel, I feel like, has other uses than just culinary. That's the thing you could wipe down all sorts gotcha. of things with. So, I, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that, I don't think. Episode 47, not a butt doctor. I feel still like true. Yeah, still, still true. Yeah, still factually correct. Yeah. <laughs> Episode. Do you think that's the one where I declared that? I declared that. Declared? Uh, declared. Yeah. Tell me about how cars are barking at you again. Uh, declared. Uh, um, what? Was that the one where that I said I didn't a, have an anal fissure, you think? And then I doubled yeah, back? Yeah, I think that was, was that, the uh, yeah. anal trenches era. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Episode 49, this is a hell of a one. <clears throat> not a big phone person, not a yeah. hot, not a cold or hot, what does it say? <laughs> oh, yeah. Not a big phone person, not a yep. cold or room temperature cheese guy, <laughs> yeah, <I hate> that. <laughs> not a big ham person. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, all true. I don't use my phone all that often. Uh, I'm not not big on apps on the phone. I uh, can't stay. If you're going to have cheese on something, it better be melted. I, there's nothing more disappointing to me than some of your cheese. And then it, not a big ham person. Once again, sort of like the mayo, I'm not going to order it. If it's there, I'm fine with it. <laughs> Episode 51. Not a cold guy. That, so that that is in with your... Um, this is the heating. thing. I need... Yeah, I love the cold. I'm a big fan of the cold. I don't know what this would be in reference to. <laughs> well, I, I feel like I feel like it's similar to what you just said, where you say you don't get cold. You're not a cold guy. Oh, that could be it. You may decipher it. That could it. be it. I yeah. do yeah. not get cold. Yeah. No, I think that might be right, Gavin. That's a good call by you. That was my prediction anyway. We'll have to verify these, obviously. Uh, episode 52... Not an arts and crafts guy. I think my basket shows otherwise. I think I've changed that. I think it's clearly, I clearly am at this point. Episode 53, not a big mashed potato person. See, this is the other thing. I am the biggest potato guy, maybe in Canada. I'm a big potato guy. I love that is a mashed a bold potato. statement. You're the biggest potato guy in Canada. I think so. I love a potato. I'll take a potato you, any meal. You don't like it mashed? Is that what you No, think? I love mashed potatoes. Well, I don't what know what this is about? about. I feel like this may have been, and I'm just going to I'm going to make a prediction here. This one I I was trying to make hash browns and they turned into mashed potatoes, and I didn't know how to then make mashed potatoes. I don't really know how to make mashed potatoes, uh. but I'll eat the <laughs> fuck out of some mashed potatoes. I love a good mashed potato. So it's more of a I'm not a big mashed potatoes preparation person. Yeah, I'm not a big <laughs> mashed potato recipe guy is probably actually how that should read, I would assume, cuz I am a huge mashed potato guy. <laughs> Episode 56. <laughs> not a can guy. Also true. Respect the can. I just don't drink many things out of a can. Not a mm. can guy. A six episode break. And then episode 62. Not a pasta guy. Once again, true. Nothing against it. I just not my rotation to foods all that often. That's still true. Fair play. <laughs> episode, I remember this one. Episode 63. Not a measuring guy. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think Dinklage just says it all. We all have. It's, this is not a thing I'm good at. I feel like a a really uh, talented artist, comet lever or rooster teeth artist 
could make a like a campaign style poster of Andrew, <laughs> like vote for Andrew running for biggest potato guy in Canada. And then it could have all the vote for Andrew. He's a and then all of the things you are. And and he's also not a <laughs> this could be all of the attributes of your platforms. It could just be a bunch of things with a little checkbox and it's either X'd out yeah. or it's got a check through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Continue. There's an X through heating, but a, a tick and cold. <laughs> I want one where I've reverse positioned like the frozen fruit, like it's an X and then it's un- <laughs> like it's a double. <laughs> it's like scribbled out. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That'd be an awesome poster. Oh, man. Episode 65, not a big bike guy. Specifically yeah. big bikes, apparently. <laughs> I'm not a big bike guy. <laughs> I love a little bike, but not a big bike. <laughs> Which leads us directly into episode 66. Not a big rules guy. <laughs> so I, this is a real moral dilemma for me, because I think, I think that's true. But as I've also said, I'm a big recipe guy. I will follow that recipe to a T. I will obey the laws of a recipe, but general rules, it's a little sometimes through dumb, sometimes through some dumb rules. <laughs> An episode 68, not a knot guy. Yeah. yeah, no, that's very true. So like tying knots, I, I think I've we talked about this before. I had boat safety, grade five. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to ace this fucking boat safety course. I'm going to do amazing at it. There's a whole section on knots and I gave up. That's the end of my pursuit of a perfect score. Can't do oh. it. So shout out to, uh, what's this u- username? Evie Lincoln. Eva Lincoln. E- Evie Lincoln. Was it? <laughs> Died of that. <laughs> I think you nailed it. One of the two. There's no way it's not one of the two things you said. I'm glad you took the shot at it, Kevin, because I didn't know how to read it either. I appreciate you making the attempt. Yeah, it's like a, both words use the L, it looks like. Yeah. Dude, Evie, Evie, Evil, Evil, Lincoln. Uh, thank you. That might have been the funniest segment in the history of this podcast. We got some new, we got some new <laughs> stuff out of it too. Oh my! I'm reading, we got, yeah, we got new segments of the list. It, it honestly makes you sound like a complete psychopath. <laughs> it does. <laughs> reading that back to back over the course of like over a year, it's like, <laughs> yeah. look, at all this, look at all this guy's rules. <laughs> Trying to make a <laughs> mental picture of of that person in your head while you're listening to it. Yeah. Oh my god! Uh, I'd love to see that in a flow chart. <laughs> it, goes down, it, just, it just ends at Andrew Panton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's also like an additional section of stuff that you were unsure about, but yeah. uh, I don't know if you want to get into that one. I don't know. Maybe we do that next time. There's not many of them. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> I got tears in my eyes. From... That was it's so... just so funny. It's a big list for some reason. <laughs> it's... It's weird to think about that, like, in the future, if I go back and listen to this episode, I'll just know that I had a bag of garlic taped to my feet the entire time. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I gotta be honest, I I still don't taste garlic. I thought I smelled it for a bit there when my nose got tickly, but... I I have a a mild taste. It's not as powerful as I want, but it's definitely, I smell it. Like, it's deep in the nose. I feel it there. Not much of a taste, though. Mm. I don't think that this could replace applying garlic to your food directly is what I declare from from this experiment. Well, maybe see, that's we we can. That's the nice thing about the garlic patch, right? Or the the foot flavor, the flavor foot uh, is we can <laughs> oh, increase Jesus. the uh, we can in, we can increase the amount of garlic, like the concentration of garlic or whatever that molecule is. And so that we can really just like, it's like, it's like when you take a vitamin B pill and it gives you like 1200% the daily recommended allotment where we can just like <laughs> fucking just like cram like a way too dangerous amount of garlic into your body so that you really get a sense of it. Should I try to take this bag off as we end the show? I'm assuming we're at the end. Assume, uh, oh, yeah. Do you, this in the episode? Yeah. Should, gonna, should I try to take I'm it off right now? I'm definitely going to clean okay. my foot off. Ugh. What was that? This is, this is not easy. Oh, oh, it smells so garlicky. Oh, oh. okay. We're I don't know what you were expecting. Oh. Oh. This can't be that. Oh. 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 Oh.
I get I, Gavin. I just had a great idea for a prank. <laughs> do you know how? Do you know how when you're a kid and you have sleepovers and you'll yeah. like put somebody's hand in warm water to make him pee the bed? <laughs> yeah. We should start gar- garlic bagging people's feet and then see if they wake up from garlic's taste in their mouth. Oh, oh, like garlic masks for the foot. <laughs> oh. I got hiccups. Oh, oh man, that was disgusting. <laughs> hey, th- <laughs> thank you for listening to another episode of He's the just F- gone. Face Podcast. Uh, sur- surviving members Jeff Ramsey and Gavin Free. Uh, rest in peace, Andrew <laughs> Panton, Raymond Somer, uh, Vancouver Child Kicker, and uh, many of your other uh, colorful uh, nom de plumes. Uh, as always, uh, if you enjoyed the show, tell a friend about it. We really could. Uh, use the help we exist pretty much uh as a company by word of mouth and certainly as a podcast as well and this isn't going to be one of those ones where i talk forever to annoy eric because he's not even here so i'll just say love you bye bye